Welcome everyone to Paranormal Roundtable. I'm your host Josh Turner, and with me, as always, is my amigo Sal. Sal, happy to be here, folks. Sal Capone. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Sal Capone. That's it. You know how that goes. Well, I think Sal Capone is going to be your new moniker. That's just it. That's it. Psych We're done. Capone. Sal Capone. <laughs> psycho. <laughs> no, um, you're not a psycho. No, you're not a psycho. You're you're a very 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 down to earth guy. So on this episode, Dogman. Oh, I guess yeah, because man. you know, and, and and me and Sal are both kind of in agreement. We really don't like that term, dog man, because yeah. what we see down here in Texas, not us it looks personally, like a but it looks like a werewolf. It's a werewolf. Know? We're we're seeing not us personally, but we're we're hearing reports of people seeing wolf. They're describing your quintessential werewolf. Yeah, we we should, we should call this episode Texas Wolf Men. I don't know. Texas werewolves. Texas werewolves. And we yeah, got plenty Texas of them. Wolf men. We're not the only ones, ladies and gentlemen. We're not the only ones that report these types of uh, encounters that people have. There's a lot of other people that are reporting the same thing we are. I mean, we'd love to get those stories and have people come to us exclusively, but hey, we're, hey, if you want to get your story out, we're all for it. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, we'll plug the email. You want to do it? Definitely. DosWolfman88 at gmail.com and WolfenSal at gmail.com yep or private message me if you got me on facebook folks uh we're, we have a show lined up tonight uh but first i wanted to, to do what we've been doing with the comments tony's got me reading some comments here and i and i'm glad that he uh that he did this i asked him to uh find some good comments because some of you people you give us a lot of good uh props and and i just wanted to this one comes from linda lamuth uh episode four you guys have skyrocketed to number one in the crypto YouTube genre in my book by far. For just starting out, you guys rock the house. I'm in for you 100%. You're amazing. Creep me out over and over again. I was all about Dogman. I never really thought about other weird stuff, but geez, you opened up a whole new vista of cool stuff that's off the charts. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. I've fallen in love with Texas. Thanks for the neat history lessons and insight. You guys know so much about so much stuff. It's absolutely great. Your voices are cool. Humor is priceless. Open minded, open mindedness, outstanding. I love you guys. Period. Continue bringing us your great stories forever, please. Sincerely, you're always big fan, Linda. That's so nice. That awesome. is really really cool. Awesome. Thank that was you from so much. episode four. Thank you so much. Thank and you so much. I mean, hey, very kind words. And then uh, <laughs> this one is I love fabric and flowers. Gargoyle accounts are very rare to come across, so I personally find these very interesting. Lots of people do other cryptid accounts. You guys could corner the market in gargoyles. Well, we yeah. definitely want to learn what these gargoyle things are. I mean, it's just there's no one out there telling you know folks about it. And so, people, if you if you folks, if you got stories on gargoyles, we definitely want you to. Let us know if you've had an encounter with some one of those things because it's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to hear about that. So here, here's some uh, comments from episode five. Yes, big Cowboys fan here from way up in Canada. Remember the 94 NFC Championship oh, game? Oh, yes, How I it do. started, how they almost came back, and how it ended with primetime's obvious hold. It was the same with the Steelers in the 70s, getting all the calls in those Super Bowls. Love the Cowboys. Mm -hmm. But NCAA is Sooners all the way. Oof. Reese Packer sent that. Reese, that's awesome. I remember that game like it was yesterday, and I still gets me mad. I still feel like the Cowboys get cheated a lot when they get to big games because they do. The league doesn't like us because we're Texas. I mean, it's true. I just don't. I just I think it's what it is. They don't. They don't want Texas. Texas is too rebellious, too defiant. It needs to be under control. It's been happening since <laughs> after the Civil War. They've been trying to take and put us down and keep us under control. It's been before the Civil War since. The well, war. yeah, since, since the Republic of Texas, really, mm -hmm. you know, but Definitely. yeah, but after Civil War and Reconstruction, Texas was where all the Confederate outlaws came and mm -hmm. so to escape. And of course, the Comanches were out of hand and whatever. But anyways, this one comes from Athena Macias, another great channel. Love listening to Josh Turner. This came up on autoplay. Once I heard Wolf's voice, I knew it was going to be another good one. So cat people. Wow. We just finished watching an older series called True Blood. Yes. I remember seeing parts of that show. And there were Black Panther people, backwoods type of people, along with werewolves. Good job, guys. Oh, yeah. I Do you remember, remember True Blood? Show. I saw I parts never, of it. I never, I never really got, got into it because it was I never got to see it all. Vampires. I was always busy. But it was interesting because 
you know, it had uh, somebody told me that the vampires like were like overpowering the werewolves, and I was like, nah, I don't want to watch it because <laughs> yeah, I know that's not real. You know, right. I mean, that's not. I don't believe it. It's yeah. It's 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 like the like these movies nowadays where they got the hundred and five pound girl soaking wet, overpowering the two hundred plus or kids guy. beating up everybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. funny, but come on, dude. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, it says this one says John Can. It says, Hi, hey, Josh. About time we had your own show. We always look forward to hearing from you on Dogman Encounters. You're, you're our favorite guest over here in the UK. P.S. You don't reply to this message. That would be so, so cool. I'm sure people can here can agree with that. Like this comment, if you agree, Josh is the number one. And that's all the comments we're going to talk about for today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Those are from way back, episodes uh, four, five, four and five, I think. Nice. We got to cut it short with that because we got to get into this dog man uh, stuff, yeah. man. I'm dog telling man you guys, is always, you know, <laughs> intriguing. Oh, it's it's never to me. It's never an old. It's never one of those tiring subjects. It's it's because there's so much, so much there. Well, uh, you know, as you know, uh, Sal, that I cut my teeth on the dog man subject, doing lots of research on it, and getting lots of accounts, and and taking people's stories researching it for a long long time and that's how i got started on vic's show was with the dog man thing and so that's kind of my uh my thing in the beginning but i had so many other stories about so much other paranormal stuff that i just was like there's a lot more than just dog man but dog man is still definitely a favorite and it's a favorite of a lot of people so that being said you know when you think about the dog man aka the werewolf you, you have to ask yourself when someone designed or first decided to put on the you know movie screen a realistic um a realistic looking werewolf you have to ask yourself did they talk to somebody you know somebody that had an actual encounter because these encounters have been going on long before this these modern day long, well i guess you could say in the in, in the modern era in the course of the last 50 years or better no, I'd just say 50 years. We'll leave it at that. Of course, the last 50 years with American Werewolf in London is the one where they got a realistic, I guess, a realistic look of what a werewolf looks like. And what I mean by that is what these people describe out there. So it makes you wonder if these people went and talked to somebody, if if American Werewolf in London was the standard. Yeah. I, 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 would, I would speculate they did. I would definitely speculate they did. So with that being said, man, lay the first one on us, man. There's a lot of stories that I know you're like, you're like a repository. So, well, th this first one that I'm going to talk about, it was this, it was a security guard in near your neck of the woods. Oh, where I lived for a while. Yeah. Woodlands, but you oh, didn't live yeah. in the woodlands, but you live close. I live close. I was about 30 minutes away. Yeah. Max. Maybe even closer. closer. Than that, 20 minutes. Maybe. Well, Depending yeah. If I took a lot of the back roads. Yeah. 20 yeah. minutes. But, uh, Right, right there in the woodlands. Now, folks, where this is at, do you want to describe it? Now, the woodlands is a suburb on the northeast. Northeast of Houston. Yeah, yeah I would say northeast, but it's very nice out there. Very they have pretty. the Cynthia Mitchell Woods Pavilion. They have a lot of outdoor concerts out there. Very pretty. Really nice. Very ritzy area, too. A lot of That's the ritzy side of, of uh, Houston, the north side, anyways. Heavily wooded, though. Heavily, heavily wooded in and around there. So a security guard seeing one of the, you know, seeing one of those werewolves out there. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. No, it didn't surprise <laughs> me either. And I, and I was like, that makes sense, <laughs> you know. Oh, yeah. So guy sent me this story. And so I've corresponded with him. He does patrol. He drives his little truck around, you know, like patrol guys do. And in one of the apartment complexes there was – you know, I'm not at really liberty to, to say because I don't, that's all, like I said, there's a very rich area. <laughs> people, very wealthy people don't want to say what the company was. But anyways, he was doing his patrol like he did every night. And he drove in and there was a lady that was walking out to the trek to try. Uh, let me see what time it was. He said it was close to one thirty in the morning. And he said that there was a woman that was walking to take her trash out and then, then, you know, he saw a guy walking his dog, just like a normal, everyday, mundane. It was during the week. Did he explain exactly which part of the woodlands he was at? Uh, no. He just said that he was 
does a, does a secu- has a security patrol route that covers the woodlands. Okay. And that it was an apartment complex. Probably doesn't want to say where it's at and probably because of his company he might lose his job. True. You know. Just my best guess on that would be I maybe know what you're gonna say. northeast area of, of the woodlands. Going further out toward the towards outs- Conroe. The outskirts. In yes. the outskirts, That's yes. That's what I was going to say. There's a lot of development especially going on there when too, you, so. Especially when you're talking about Conroe because yeah, there's, there's a lot there's, of stuff yeah, out there. That, that area is Bigfoot country. That's where you had your Bigfoot type yeah, stuff. Yeah, right, right there. Yeah. Uh, because if, of- and then if you keep going up and then go, you know, you, you hang, a, hang north, you go to Dallas. I mean, that's the highway. Yeah, on 45. 45 that goes up to way Dallas. Up. Yeah, that's that's what I would suspect, but like I said, I don't want to even speculate because then well, it's only speculation. I don't and want I, him to get in trouble, lose his job. Yeah, anyway. I don't either. Yeah, that's, um, that's not. Yeah. So, because uh, clients are weird, <laughs> believe me, I know. <laughs> I deal with it. So, anyways, uh, he was driving his patrol truck. He swiped his card. He went through the, the gate. Whatever this this uh, complex abutted up into some woods, of course, because it's called the Woodlands. It's surrounded by woods. Now, folks, there's a huge shopping center there in this place, but you wouldn't even know it's there because there's this woods all the way around it. So you could literally be down the street and you won't even see it from yeah. the road. That's how crazy it is. It's, it's thick. so thick and wooded. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. Like I was there with my wife. We stayed there at the hotel. I forgot which hotel it was. Hilton, mm-hmm. I believe it was. It's one of the nice ones. It was, it was a nice one. I had my Hilton rewards. Oh, so, hey, yeah. why not? So, right. so not, why not be a rich folk for a day? So anyways, we, we we stay there, and there was this big shopping mall. Then there's like an outdoor galleria thing or whatever. Um, you wouldn't know it's there unless you see it because you got to drive right up on it to know it's there. So I can imagine th- this 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 complex was very wooded, heavily wooded. It abutted up into some woods. It had an iron uh, ga- uh, uh, fence all the way around the back of it. And he sees a woman taking out the trash, whatever, and he, he turns the corner and he sees a guy – uh, uh, walking his dog and and he goes and does his little swipe with the key whatever to let the, the company know that he was there um, near the carport near a carport and his when he's getting back in his truck he sees his headlights are shining on a set of eyes and so he stops it's like his first when he first started to drive his headlights hit eyes he stops and he just stares at it, and it's this uh, wolf-headed looking creature with a gigantic wolf's head. He said it was brownish black hair. Now, I asked him about the hair and the fur, and he said that it looked like a, a, a cross between hair and fur. Right. Because I asked him, was it like hair? Was it fur? Because you'll get weird stories. And he said that in s- certain spots, it almost looked splotchy, like it, well, there, well, you could see flesh. Right, the flesh was tan, the creature was tan, and he said that it was a uh, a dark tan. Anyway, pointy ears, uh, yellowish amber eyes, as he said. One, well, and, and I'll say this: he did tell me they were yellow, but I asked him, I was like, were they amberish? He said yes. Yeah. So he asked. I don't like to lead the witnesses, you know, too much, but and and it had a snout, very big head. He said it was and and and. and he saw hands, right. human-looking hands with black nails, grabbing the top of the uh, fence, of the iron fence, which he said that the, the top of the fence was about six foot. Wow. This thing was over it, at least two foot over it, and he could see it holding its so hands it's over the like top. basically like chest level for it. Yeah. I wish people could sit at home could see what I'm doing, but it like gets his hands on the fence. And he said, and it just stared and looked at him, and it did not move to run away or make any it and what was at him yeah well what oh, was wow. really telling about this incident and i told my wife about this story just we, we had discussed it that was kind of scary because there's complexes here in austin that are like that that my guys go to yeah. and so you know i've been on some of these routes and i'm you know and it didn't really i don't really think about it because you, you know you can't be going around thinking about it but yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's his, like... he, his lights were on. And he said he sat there and stared at it for probably a full minute. What did he do after that? Well, well, he said he was just staring at it, and then right. finally, you know, it jumped down like on all fours, and it ran into the woods. And he said he didn't really get a good look at the legs because there was so much brush and so much growth. Yeah, that it was kind of just oh, he saw it from the waist up, and it looked man-like but also wolf-like. He said he'll never forget it. 
you know, he said it happened like three years ago. Wow. And uh, yeah, I just got this report recently. And so he said that this thing looked like a werewolf. I mean, he just had no other way to describe it. He was like, you know, and so. I've noticed that that's the classic description that everybody, or not, okay, that's a, <laughs> I'm using an absolute. No, that's that's the high majority of the people that describe these things. That's what they look like. That's the only thing that they can fall back on in their mind to say it looks like a werewolf. So, and of course, not being able to see the, the you know, the legs, well, it is very wooded out there. Trust me, it is so thick. Yeah, and and I can imagine because even here in Austin, there's there's certain it's really heavily wooded here. Yeah, too. there's yeah, especially when you start getting around the cedar, the the parts oh, around man. Yeah, the, the cedar lake. gets thick. Yeah, you get out near the lake near six twenty and those complexes out there, you, you can't the, the, the same thing. I, I know I noticed that's the same thing. Like the, 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 there's a fence, and some of them have a wooded fence, some of them have a, uh, an iron fence. Correct. But this guy said it was an iron fence, and the thing that was so telling about it. Was that there was a woman just obliviously taking her trash out. Right. And a guy walking his dog in the little dog area. Nothing. And they did not see it. And he told me, he said, he's like, this thing was watching. Like, he didn't know if this thing was like watching like the guy with the little dog. Right. Or if it was stalking him. Because, you know, he parked his truck and got out and went and he locked the clubhouse and the pool area. Right. Or whatever. Or checked the pool area, I guess he said. And then he came back out and uh, was checking to make sure everything was locked up like it was supposed to be. That's and like. Got in his truck and there it was. And <laughs> it was standing, he said, probably 50 yards. And he drove, you know, forward, you know. He, yeah. He said he got as close as 30 to 35 yards from that. And what, then he just booked it out of there? <laughs> yeah, well, he said he just kind of just slowly went toward it and then was, like, trying to figure out what he was looking at at first, you know? Wow. So he was still, for lack of better words, blown away at yeah. what he was looking. I would be, too. I mean, what? That's just nuts, though. We got a basically a gated neighborhood. So, you know, some a neighbor walking the dog. And another one just out there walking around slash running, doing a little exercise, them being totally oblivious because they feel safe. Uh, that, that, I think that adds up about right. That's the whole point. And then this thing just looking over fence and they didn't notice <laughs> Sitting it. Sitting right there. And they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They don't see it. Wow. I mean, that that's scary as heck, man, because, yeah, you feel comfortable. You're living in this. You, and you're, you got yeah. a security guard that comes through there every hour. He said that there's an actual guard that is on the property four to six hours a day up into the evening. And then when the pool closes, he leaves. Really? But then he comes in every hour on his patrol. And that's it? Yeah. That's... And those people have no idea. I mean, it's a low crime area, so they probably don't feel True, like, yeah. Yeah, they don't. You're not going to expect to be eaten by a <laughs> werewolf, <laughs> six, you know? Six, six, seven foot, you know, <laughs> werewolf, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that one was pretty messed up. I was kind of like, wow, that's a... Uh, I mean, I can only imagine what he was thinking because I would have freaked out. Did he? Did he give any more detail? Well, actually, actually, you know, he talked about it was kind of. He said it was kind of splotchy, or, or yeah, the hair. He said that yeah. the hair looked like if if a person's hair on their body, right, was like overgrown, like you just had like a really like when you see somebody's really hairy back. Mm -hmm. Now, not, I don't want to say he said that. He didn't say that, right. but he. It, it, that's what I'm imagining. But he what, did say way. he did say though if somebody's hair was just growing out of control. Right. But it was almost, it wasn't like fur. Right. But it was like thick, thick hair that almost looked like fur. Wow. See that? Now, again, because there is the difference between fur and hair. It is different. And the hair, when it grows, it has a different look More than the coarse. fur. Yeah. So if he was describing this creature's outer covering, i.e. not calling it fur, but more like hair, that... That that uh, that kind of, I guess you could say, implies human because humans have hair. You know, this is this. all that I could think of. Yeah, I mean, but then it looked like a maybe it was a guy that, that glued a bunch of hair to his body. <laughs> I don't know, but how <laughs> put would he, on a helmet with, how with would he, ears. I don't know. No, I don't think he could have pulled that one off, no matter what. But that's you know that makes uh it makes for quite an interesting. You know, like you said, it's it's. How he's going to get it? back with me about this because he told me definitely that there's cameras there. Oh, and that then if anything ever happens on the property, they they can check the cameras. So he's going to try and check them. That and see if there's anything they can catch anything. 
I like so that. So I'll, I'll be trying to, to follow up with that guy Definitely. about that. that that's going to be interesting if they find anything. That's interesting. Wow. I definitely want to hear that. So when we get a when we get an update on that, man, please. That's really crazy. So with that being said, what about Marble Falls? I know I, I know I asked you in a previous uh asked you in a previous episode about yeah. there was a dog man marble falls sighting this I you know and, and of course there's another one out there too that's near there, you know, in and around Burnett, Texas. So and they're not far from each other. Yeah. So hey which one is, I guess the question is, is which one is uh, first and which one's second? I guess, do we know date-wise which one happened first? Uh, I believe that the Marble Falls one was uh, the older one. Oh, well, let's let's hear it, man. Yeah, Marble Falls, now you know if it, go, it goes out because where you live in Cedar Park now. Yeah, yeah. 1431. And if mm-hmm. you take 1431, you keep going, you end up in Jonestown, Lago Vista. Then you, and then from Lago Vista to Marble Falls, there's nothing. There's nothing. Just uh, the Balcones uh, Wildlife Refuge. That's the Wildlife Refuge right. is right outside of Lago Vista. Yeah. And then beyond that, there are three or four different recreational camping areas like yes, Turkey, Turkey Creek mm-hmm. Lake or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. There's a couple there's, little lake lake areas. Oh, yeah. um, and then there's some that shoot off from the river. Oh, yeah. And there's lots of creeks. But there's lots of water out there. There's a Very lot of water so. going all the way out to Marble Falls. So there, there were yeah, well, the lake, yeah, the Balcones, uh, Canyonlands National Wildlife, and you go on one, you know, on fourteen thirty one all the way through there. You're it's rural and it's and it's a two lane road winding, yes. left and right all the way through there until you hit Marble Falls, and it's very rural, folks. Nothing is out there. So, and, and not too far to the north, where you know, not too far to the north when you look up on the map. If you're checking your map right now, guess what? You got Bertram up there. Bertram and oatmeal. Yeah, Bertram is real close to where I had a friend that saw the three he, dog men that when he was hunting. Yeah. And then, then the rake creature. All that area. His brother rural. saw the rake creature at a different time. Yeah, in, in all that area between where we're talking about near uh, Lago Vista, if you look on the map where Lago Vista is at and the Balcones Canyonlands National Wildlife, uh, preserve, park, whatever you want to call it. And you look north, basically all the way through there up until you get to Bertram. It's it's rural, rural, it just yeah, nothing but woods. So in so, anyways, what happened was the, the this Marble Falls incident. The guy lives not far out of Marble Falls. He was driving home, coming back from Austin. Oh yeah, okay. And so he was. He went down fourteen thirty one. I guess I should say he was probably. I would assume. So he was coming back from Cedar Park, right? Okay, and so he was driving down fourteen thirty one, uh, about three miles before he got to Marble Falls, mm-hmm. and he saw what he thought were two people at right. first because they were standing up on the right. side of the road. And he thought, what are these people doing? And it's very dark out there yeah. at night. Yes, you can see is. the stars. Really, there's no light out there. And he just, his lights illuminated him when he came down this little hill. And he saw them like turn and get down on all fours and then run up under a barbed wire fence and run into a field. Wow. Got a description of them. They got, he got really close to them. And he said they had big, long tails. Um, like dog-like tails. They were not coyotes. He said they absolutely were not. They were probably seven foot tall, and okay. they had the hind legs. He saw one of them particularly saw that he had the hind legs of a, of a wolf or a dog, and, whatever. Dog yeah, shape. or a dog. Yeah. Well, he said wolf. Oh, but, okay. But I mean, like you know, and then they they ducked under the barbed wire fence, and then they were gone. And he said that he saw them running in, into the pasture, or whatever or into the field mm-hmm. and heading toward a group of clump of trees. And he just looked and he saw them and he was like, they were, they looked like werewolves. He said that they had upper body of like a human. Didn't really get a good look at the arms or whatever, you know, he just said that cause they got down pretty quick and they looked like timber wolves standing on hind legs. Wow. That's. So yeah, that was I've weird. Driven, I've driven down that road quite a few times. Uh, matter of fact, I went down that road not too long ago mm, to spend some time out at uh, Horseshoe Bay with one of my cousins invited me out there. And it's dark driving that whole stretch from from the uh, you know Cedar Park area all the way out to Marble Falls, and especially at night. It is 
I mean, it is very dark. The whole, I guess you could say the whole area just, it, it's like it completely changes and it gets dark on both sides. Yeah. Very windy, oh, yeah. lots of hills. Yeah, I can only imagine. I can only imagine what he was. I know it would have blown my mind if, I, if I'd have seen that. It would have definitely blown my mind. Well, and here's another thing. This guy was driving from Marble Falls to burn it. Now, um, this is a different person. Right. And then that's why, you know, there's threads. Mm-hmm. You get these threads here. This guy was going from Marble Falls to burn it, and he was uh, pulling a trailer, I believe. He said he was pulling a trailer, and he he couldn't go super fast because right. of the trailer or whatever. You know, and as he was coming around uh, a slight curve, there was this creature that was on the side of the road that was doing something like it was bent down, hunched over, and it stood up and it like went and it leapt over the barbed wire fence, did not go up under it like the other guys said. And when it did, it ran toward the, an open field where there was another one of the same thing. And they both turned and stood and looked at him as he drove past so they had really big, long ears sticking up on the tops of their heads. Oh, wow. And that they had very um, human-like bodies, but were covered in fur, and they looked like wolves. And they had the back, the canine-type legs, the way he described it to me. And he said, I got a good look at him. He goes, I wasn't going real fast. And it was daylight. That's... This was in broad daylight. <laughs> and he said, I looked right at him, and I saw him. And he's like, and they were looking at each other, and then they just looked at me. And then he goes... As I, as I was kind of pulling away, you know, he said that they got down and they ran off on all fours. And he said that the way that the one jumped was almost like he, he thought, at first he thought it was a dang kangaroo. <laughs> really? Yeah. God. So. I can only imagine how powerful their legs are. When, yeah. You know, same same freaky. city, same area, a uh, woman who's a friend of that guy's wife. Okay. Now, she was driving home one day. From uh, Bertram, I believe it was. I think he lives in between. They, they, the, this woman lives in between Burnett and Bertram, which is yes. real close. And that the, they were, she was going down a county road right outside of Bertram. I don't know which one it is. There's a bunch of them. My, my dad's side of the family has some land out there too. Yeah, it's very and rural out there. Yeah, there, there's a there's a deer lease out there, um, and that my dad's family had for a long time, and a few other things. Um, maybe a church, I think in Joppa, there's not much out there. And then, no, but this was isn't. like outside of a Bertram, which Bertram is a small spot on the road anyway, but she was going down a County road and she said that this was at night and she was heading back to the ranch and this creature ran across the road, almost making contact with her vehicle. It was on all fours. She didn't see it on two legs. But she said that the, the the top of the head had to have been six foot off the ground on all fours. That's a massive and She said one. it was a humongous, I mean, just absolutely prehistoric, humongous looking wolf. And she said it was so weird looking and it ran so fast that, that the tail, she did this big old big tail literally knocked the antenna backwards on her car, like when, when it when it ran across the road. Dead she junk. said it was like a blur, but she could she could make out what it was, you know. But it was just so fast. She said her daughter was in the car asleep, and they were coming back from some some function or whatever, and she screamed, and the daughter sat up, screamed, and then looked out the window to the right and saw it running into the the field. So she the daughter saw the back end of it, but it was brownish gray, Damn. or brown Damn. and gray. But yeah. Six foot tall on all fours. Mm -hmm. At the shoulders, she said it was probably five feet. You know, five, six to, to four to five back. foot. Yeah, and then the head was real big and massive. <sighs> Don't know what that is. <laughs> the creatures, though, like the, the, the Burnett creatures and yeah. the Marble Fall creatures were both described as blackish brown. Right. Whereas this one was described more as um, the reddish. Oh, you armor? know what? I'm getting this wrong. I'm getting that, that wrong. I'm sorry. The Creatures that that were seen, the ones from Marble Falls, where the guy was almost from Marble Falls in 1431, they mm -hmm. looked brownish gray like timber wolves. Right, right. Yeah. This big one looked blackish brown, and then the two that the guy saw in there burn it were blackish brown. That's that's the, the description of the colors. That's crazy, though. I mean, it has to, I mean, well, de depending on when they happen, the one that the lady saw that that you know when it ran out in front of her and the tail sw swished and and, and hit, the, hit the hit the hit uh, the antenna, antenna and yeah. bent it you know to me it make you think I mean if they're relatively in the same time frame 
that that has to be the alpha. Mm-hmm. Whether female or male, we don't know. But and then the, they're probably all from the same pack, or whatever, or whatever, whatever yeah. yeah. But that's scary. C- could you imagine? No, I can't. Actually, and I don't want to. But <laughs> that's like... <laughs> I definitely agree with you on that because it is, you know, yeah. I, mean, I I would have done what that lady would done. I'd have tripped out, man, if I'd have seen a six foot tall on all fours, six foot tall, and it, it not being a horse or a, or a, or a, or a bull or anything. I would have, you know, I would have said, yeah, that's yeah. I would have freaked out because the only thing I can, the only thing I can think of that would be that big that I can relation wise would be. Uh, Charlay bulls are really tall when I was a young man, you know, I used to do the rodeo thing and I one time got on a Charlay bull. Well, when I stood right beside the bull outside the chute, of course, where my eyes were, I had to look up slightly to see the top of its back. So I said, it's probably about six foot at the top of its back. That was a big bull. So long story short with that is seeing something that big and run so fast is amazingly crazy. To me, that would really blow my mind. I mean, at the speed. It's just the speed I can only imagine. But, wow. Wow, that lady. What could have gone through her mind? I have no idea. Besides freaking out, I mean. Besides fear. Yeah. You know? That's just amazing. Now, the thing that gets gets me to thinking about these, these werewolves in this particular area and like I said, some of you folks out there, look look it up on your map. Pull it up real quick, and you'll see where Burnett's at, Marble Falls at, Lago Vista's at, Liberty Hill is at, and of course, then you got Leander, Cedar Park, all those areas. If you look around there, you've got basically a square where there is nothing but a bunch of tall hills and nothing but woods, a few houses scattered all over the place. But all in all, it's rural. Uh, it's easy to say that's 90% rural. So for them to hang out there and then, of course, sneak down to where the Colorado River comes through, that wouldn't be a problem for them. So it doesn't surprise me. But just the only thing that does surprise me is the size of that one the lady saw. Yeah, that's huge. How, big, how big it was. Yeah, that's huge. Scary, very scary. So any folks that, that uh, think that that's a laughing matter, it's all hogwash and poo-poo on that all I can say is there's a lot of strange stuff out in this world. And yeah, I mean, like the the story I told on Vic show, the ones from Heiko, Texas. Yes, right outside of Heiko, they were eating that deer, and that one just stood up in the ditch. Oh yes, and yes. it was seven foot tall, you know, just standing down in the ditch, and so which means you know the ditch was probably a foot and a half. She said, the the guy said that his wife saw it, you know, and they they got a clear look at it. They were going down a gravel road. They couldn't go that fast. Yeah, because they, they they would probably uh, roll the flip the vehicle because you know that's what gravel dirt roads do. And when you stop and think about it, uh, those of you that are still looking at your map, if you are, it's the same kind of area that the uh, out in Heiko that we're talking about. You know, it's similar that it's in the fact that it's rural, just like very rural. Lots of country county roads all over the place. Here's one that comes out of Rockdale, and they're close to Rockdale, and they're close to the area that I grew up. Yeah, Rockdale this is guy rural. A, is all get out too. Yeah, it's between Rockdale and Caldwell. Yeah, yeah, that's now that's and very rural out there. This guy claimed to, to have he told a friend of mine. He told my friend because my friend knows I research this stuff. Gave him a story back in 1972. He said this was a long time ago. Wow, that something was killing his sheep. He had sheep and he had cows and he had some other stuff but something had killed two of his sheep and they thought it was the way that they were killed were very canine they saw these humongous canine prints and they thought it's got to be some sort of uh somebody's canine, whatever old dog or something so one day he goes out to the pasture after the two sheep had been killed and one of his calves was completely eviscerated and just just like stripped you know like i right. mean it was like just gone you know and it looked like half of the animal had been eaten and the other half was actually stuck in a tree, like hanging. Yeah, you know, like save it for later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like later, like something a leopard would do. Yeah. But he said that it was it was chewed up pretty good and, and he managed to get, they got a big stick and they yanked it out of the tree. And, then, and so they knew there was a large predator in the area. They didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. And so- he started having to go out more and more into his ranch land, go out there to check and 
trying to figure out what it was that was doing this mess. And one night, he was deciding to go out in the evening at dusk just to go right around because it was happening at night. Right. And there was almost like a pattern. Like there was like one sheep and then another sheep, and it was happening every three or four days. Right. So he thought this would be a good time to go out and check. And he said it was a full moon, by the way. Interesting. Went out, and sure enough, he hears like this, like a cow, like in distress, like it's being torn apart, it's it's Correct. being killed, and he comes upon this creature that he said that looked like a a werewolf on steroids. Whoa. That was just like a werewolf had the wolf like head and was down on top of this this cow. And was just just eating it, just tearing it to pieces, chewing the bone, basically and everything. eating it alive. Like basically just taking big bites out of it. Like mm-hmm. he said, it had this humongous mouth that you wouldn't believe how big the mouth was, and it had these humongous like arm like uh, appendages that didn't have legs in the front. It was like arms. He said it looked like arms, but it was hunched down, kind of squatted, hunched down over this cow, mm-hmm. and that it its legs were uh, like canine like legs, Correct. and that it was just taking huge bites, a bone and everything, out of this cow. Holy. It's a humongous wow. snout, uh, reddish brown fur is what he said. And he said that it looked up and it saw him with the light, with its light, and it took like one or two more big bites and then darted off into the into the woods. So he got some of the neighbor people that he had known, the, the ranchers in that area, uh, got together three different landowners, mm-hmm. and they had all had deprivation happening. Right, yeah, they had all the, that predation the, uh, happening. Uh, predation happening, whatever. And so they just they they got together, and one of them had said that they told this guy that they had seen one down drinking down on all fours at, at a, out of a tank, and it looked almost like a wolf, but he couldn't tell what it was. But then it had these weird looking upper body, correct? Basically, a dog man, you know. Yeah, and they had been losing livestock and so eventually they just started like you know taking turns going and, and kind of policing each other's property they hired some guys to, to go and, and right you know and and they would they would go and drive around and they just were you know one night you go out and next night i go out and then they hired some some guys to do it and they had a guy who shot this thing oh and the, the, this is the story that they told me this okay, is back this is, in 72. This right? happened in 1972, according to them. They sh- that one of them shot this thing and that it they hit it like it went right through its back, tore out the front of it. They know they hit it, they trailed it. And then it the, then the trail broke off. They think it might have went up in a tree. And then the next day they found this creature slumped over uh the barbed wire fence, the barbed wire fence hanging down. Like like its leg and everything had been caught, you know, and it been it just like was laying there, and so they didn't know what it was. They took it, took fo- took a couple photos of it, which the guy says that they, you know that he told the the kid that you know he didn't. One of the other ranchers that's long since deceased had the fi- the pictures of it, and that supposedly they gave it to a newspaper or whatever, like you know I don't know which or who, yeah. and that it was published. The photos were. Oh, according to them, in the newspaper, I had, yeah, in the newspaper, I, I, and, the, and he couldn't tell me what shitty or what if it was, you know, but that this thing was shot and killed, and he said it was about eight, eight and a half feet tall. Holy, mackerel. probably weighed about seven hundred pounds. Holy he said it was mackerel. humongous. They had to use like a chain to to, to mm-hmm. drag it and lift it up, you know, and 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 they had it upside down, hanging and everything. Said it looked almost like a gorilla with a wolf's like head, but with dog like legs. Dad gum. And it was just it was just the weirdest thing they'd ever seen. They didn't know what it was. And they killed it. According to this guy who told me the story. Makes you wonder what they did with the carcass. No idea. I mean, I don't I don't I don't I know what he told me they did. Right. But I don't know what really happened to it. So what so what was According the story? to them, they they bur- they burned they bur- it. They burned it or buried yeah, it. Yeah, they they burned it. And then what was left with the bones and they just, you know, whatever. Wow. That's but they that's... took pictures of it supposedly and put it to the you know, and supposedly wow. and then they said that, you know, the years later, you know, the photos had popped back up. People were saying they were fake or whatever, you know, but I don't know. That's Wow. Kid that told me that, though, I mean, like, his great uncle was the one involved in all that. 
That's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, and and I actually went to a um, school that was like on the like in between Rockdale and Carwell in that area. Right. And so that's very rural out there. There's nothing out there. Very much so. When you think about the, I guess for lack of better words, you you think about the description that people give, and then of course, it comes out to be a mixture, you know, human like chest arms area but then when you get down to the waist area for lack of better words it's 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 canid i mean come on you i don't know about anybody else you can't help but to think some there was some type of genetic manipulation going on because you know we've yeah. seen we've seen canines and and canines have a, a basic you know that their chests are a certain shape and then of course now you've got one with a hominid humanid or excuse me hominid or human like or human shaped chest it's crazy i mean i i don't know i don't see how what do you can... think of that story though because that is like a secondhand story that was told to me i would not i wouldn't can't i wouldn't throw it out i will you know i wouldn't throw the i wouldn't throw it out i would definitely you know and and and, and you know people will tell you you know it, it, it goes down the line the truth is somewhere probably in the middle, you know. I mean, something happened. Yeah. The ranchers at, did lose cattle, I believe, and they probably did kill something. Well, and maybe well, they at, did take pictures Look at all the stuff in know. the Hernandez Ranch you were talking about oh, on the big man. show. I know, yeah. So for these folks to have something like that and they were able to take care of it. But it was just one critter. It, it may have been Whereas passing like through. Whereas like the guy that we interviewed. Ernest. You know, yeah. And his bunch grandfather's of stuff place, was yeah. like always happening. And then the Hernandez has had a bunch of stuff happening. Because I think maybe this one that we're talking about that in the story that you mentioned is that it was it was probably passing through. It was just staying there in the meantime while it fed before it kept moving. Because or, or, or it was a rogue. It was a rogue individual that had been cast out or That's so big though, man. It's kind of hard to think that it would be it wouldn't be the alpha. It may have because been, if it was cast out by another alpha, can you imagine how big <laughs> that alpha was? <laughs> yeah. That's uh, that's a terrifying thought. I mean, yeah, it is. It is. You know, and, and to give some people a pers- uh, try to give you some, some kind of a, an idea. Okay, I I grew up as a kid. We you know we rode horses, been around them and stuff. So you get you size wise, those of you that that have been around horses, you know, you get a, your, your your average horse is about fifteen hands high, sixteen hands high. Okay, so let's just say that's your average you know, big dog man. And if anybody, if any of you have ever seen a Percheron horse, they are seven to seven and a half feet at the withers. So the very top of their back is almost eight feet tall. That's crazy. So can you imagine a dog man the size of a Percheron that big? That Those things would have to be killing everything around them. Right. I mean, they'd be eating all the time. They'd probably just kill off all the, the deer and... You know, here's the thought. Here's the thought I've had when, when it comes to the to the werewolf dogman thing. I think we both can agree that they have a higher intelligence. What if the underlings within the pack are the ones that are sent out to hunt and bring the kills into the alpha? You know, it, it'll be and, and what if it's a rare thing for the alpha to get out and hunt unless he just wants to? But kind of like a lion. Kind of like a lion, yeah, kind of like a male lion, and have the underlings go out and hunt, kill, and bring it in to, so that way the alpha doesn't have to take a chance to be seen, just like the big bucks when people go out and hunt, you know, the smart seasoned hunters say, hey, there's the first big bucks out there, and they go, wait, hold on a second, give it another 30, 40 minutes, then the real big ones are going to come out. It Maybe it's that kind of a deal. Who knows? We, I mean, we can only speculate, but it could be that big alpha. Could be that big alpha sending out the underlings. I mean, and we can attribute that to the intelligence level. If they have a social hierarchy, and, and not so much in canid terms, but more along human terms. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And, and so, possibility. That's that's the only thing I can think of is why we don't see those extra super huge ones all the time. And this one was maybe it got cast out by another big one. Yeah. And so, therefore, it was packless, for lack of better words. It went words. rogue. And it went rogue because it didn't have a pack anymore or a tribe or a family group, whatever you want to call it. But still, that's, you know, that doesn't surprise me that that happened, but it was it's quite rural out there, brother. 
Well, I got another one. Th- this one comes out of Tyler, Texas. No, no not one. Taylor. Where Tyler. I'm from. Tyler is to the northeast. Of, Named after one of the former presidents of the United States, John Tyler. Well, it's it's also to to the right. I mean, to the right on the map. It's on the border of east yeah, of what you call East Texas. Yeah, it's on the border of the thicket. Yeah, it, it is east of Dallas. Definitely. Yeah, it's near Longview, isn't it? I think. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's it's in that area. Yeah, that area. Um, also very rural. It's a big town. I mean, te- Texas is crazy, folks. It's got like a lot of big towns like Beaumont, Tyler, Waco. Abilene, these are Corpus, you know, they're like small cities, big towns, okay, very, yes. with, with, with a high population density, whatever, but, the, you know, and then we have, of course, we have like, what, I think four, three or four of them, the, the top ten largest cities in the country are right here in Texas. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Houston's fourth. Houston, San Antonio, think, Dallas. Houston's number four. I, know, I, know I think San number Antonio. three maybe by now. Who knows? Well, I, I know that, that Austin's going to be number nine from what they're projecting. Yes. So it's like uh, in the entire country. Yes. But the, I stand the, the biggest correct. cities in, in yeah. Texas right now are Houston, then San Antonio, then Dallas, then Austin, then Fort Worth. Those are the top five. Right. But you have a lot of big towns, and Tyler is one of those big towns. It's a bigger town, yes. It is. Very big. It's and not huge, huge, but it is big. It's big. But, and, but, and I stand corrected, brother. It is East Texas. You were right. East Texas, yeah. Yes, East Texas. Yeah. So, so to to the east um, of of Tyler, the, the, this lady, she worked at the hospital there, I guess, and or, or yeah, she worked at a hospital. I know that, and and so she was going home from work, and on either and she lived kind of out in the country, you know, and on either side of the road, these two hairy creatures on all fours. That only could be described as wolf-like, as she described them, began to ping pong her car back and forth, and she was driving a very small car. So they were having fun just swatting it around. Yeah, like, she like... was driving a little Honda. I think it was a Honda Accord, which oh, wow. she wrote. And that they, one of them shouldered it, and then the other one shouldered it, and then and and it was like she almost went off in the ditch, and almost lost control. Oh, <laughs> and it was like they were trying to make her go off the road. Holy Jesus. And she said that they looked like big, like they were the size of mountain gorillas, you know, but that they had wolf-like heads. Now, what was that? Like, what is that? I mean, like, and she said that she didn't run them over, but she, she and she kept her, uh, her, her control. Right. But she almost lost control and almost went into a ditch. And she was like, it was, she, she did go off actually and got back on the road. Right. But she said that she got the feeling that they were messing with her. They were you just know, they toying were just around with her. With her. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's a question: uh, Did she ever describe what they looked like physically, apart from the head? Yeah, black. They were black, fur, full of fur, and that they had big snouts like canines. Right. You know. Did they? Did they describe the legs? Just look like wolves. That's all she. That's, that's all she could tell me. Yeah, because I, I never mean, saw them on two legs. But there are no wolves that are going to go out and start bouncing your car around like that. No. And that has to be yeah, the something. Dog man. Know? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. And I that, mean, to me, that's a testament to their intelligence, their human level type mm-hmm. intelligence. And so, wow. Yeah, I would have had a Charmin moment if I'd have been in that little yeah, car. Bing, 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 bing. What could you right. do? I mean, I mean, you know, and if you Stay wreck, you're pretty much done. I mean, they're, yeah. they're, and then there's another story I got. And this one came from, um, I don't remember the name, the, the closest town would be Shiner, Texas. Okay, okay. Right outside of Shiner. And the guy was just driving along, and he saw this thing standing on, on the side of the road with a very evil, evil-looking, menacing wolf-like face. Said it was black, and it was holding a dead deer by its leg. And he said that it happened back in the late '80s, and he'll never forget it. Down around Shiner, says so he's a area. Vietnam vet, and that he knows what he saw. And he was driving down the, the road, and he said it was like it had come up to the road, like it was going to cross the road, and it stopped. Didn't say anything about the legs. I asked him about the legs. He said it just looked like a man with a wolf's head, and it was holding a small deer by its leg. So that was pretty jacked up. <laughs> yeah. That is actually, how much time we got, Anthony? You know that could it could it have possibly could that have possibly been mistaken 
for um, a, a, hi- a hippie that killed no, 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 a deer? No, maybe? no, no. Yeah. Um, could that have been misidentified with a gugwi? You know, Possibly. I mean, type I three, know that those are a, it's a different to, type. I, I just know that he didn't really give me a whole lot about the legs. Correct. Yeah. And, and that's usually, unfortunately, folks, that's usually where most of us who are looking into this, this is where most of us look at it and go like, geez, now I the, wish they would have looked I, at it. I got legs one more close. story I'm going to drop on you before we get the done. With oh, that. before we call it a day on this yeah, one? Yeah. All right. And I brother. wanted to tell this one. This came from a woman from Indiana. And it was, she was, it, the poor, poor lady, um, I talked to her about this on the phone. This happened to her when she was a four-year-old child. Oh, not good. And she remembers it like very clearly. She said it was one of her first memories of having, <laughs> it was a traumatic thing that gave her a lifelong fear of canines. But she was wandering around outside. She wandered out into a cornfield. Now I might have told this story before on the show. I don't, I don't know. But she wandered around out into the cornfield where she was not supposed to go. And she came up on a, what I can only describe as a dog man that was sleeping. And she walked up to it being a child and not really yeah, cognizant. Yeah, four years old. Yeah. Not really knowing that this is not normal. This Correct. is an aberration of something that's aberration, you know, like yeah. like it's not normal. It's, it's, not, it's not supposed to exist. It's a grotesque thing that you don't normally see. It's just normal yes. to a child like me. When I was a kid, I picked up a black widow and was playing with it. Yeah. And then, thank God it didn't bite me. But somebody was like, yeah, you know, and then it scared me. And that may have what maybe what triggered my Your arachnophobia. arachnophobia. Because up until a certain point, I would touch spiders and mess with them and they didn't bother me. Mm-hmm. And then somewhere down the line, I ended up, you know, I always thought maybe it was past life. But then I thought about it, you know, and it was like... <laughs> I did. I did do that, though. That is a true story. So, <laughs> I mean, kids don't know, you know. So no, this kid true. goes up to this uh, dog man. Or at least I think that's what it was, a wolf man, whatever, mm-hmm. and tries to pet it, tries to touch it, and immediately it jumped up, you know, like like dogs do. That startled it, and it took a snap at her, like it snapped, you know. And and she said it went. She she flew back, and she felt it like the 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 snap. She heard it. This is, you know, I might have, like I said, might have told this story, but this is the details of the story. Because I think I might have told this on Chris's show or something. I'm not for sure. On, on the I know fr- I've heard you French. mention this, but I never, yeah. I haven't heard the details. I know yeah, we've talked about it. This is the details off, off of the air. story. I can tell you the details right here. But she, she flew back, like, you know, rolled back and popped up. And this thing had jumped up and was on all fours and was kind of looking around. And the corn where she was at, it was kind of a clearing on, in the cornfield. And she was kind of behind some of the stalks and it was sniffing like it didn't see her <clears throat> because it was a very large animal. She couldn't tell me how big it was. She, he just felt something touching, touch her. Yeah. Touch him. Or yeah. She touched it. Yeah. So, so then she began to run. And then when she began to run and go through the corn, she made noise. She knew which direction to go. She wasn't that deep into it. And at that time, she heard like a growling, snarling, howling sound coming from this creature as it tore through the corn going after her. Yes. Then she looks to the left and she sees what she described as a much smaller one coming at a different angle towards her. But it was still kind of off in the distance. And this bigger one was like right behind her. And she could see the clearing and she could see her grandfather uh, standing uh, like on the porch waving to her Uh uh-huh and like he had his gun and she she saw it and he she he leveled the gun at the creature i guess you know at one of them and she ran out of the cornfield and onto the into the what became what was the yard the way she described it was like the cornfield just kind of went into the yard and there was like this long yard and then she said it was like the longest run she ever had in her life and she remembers her grandfather just standing there, and he was screaming at these things. And she looked back, and they were both standing there on two legs. Oh man! One was much bigger than the other, and then they were they stopped at the edge of the corn, and then they got down and ran back out into the cornfield. Wow! And the grandfather shot a couple times. She doesn't know if she shot at them or over their heads or what. And the, he chastised her and told her, you know, you don't ever go out in the cornfield by yourself. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was definitely that. That sounds like a super Sherman moment. Now she never saw four. them again, according right. to her. But the grandmother and the grandfather told. This is what's interesting. Oh, the grandmother told her 
the the story that those were relatives. Okay, you got to elaborate on this. Okay, part. that's what's weird. Yeah. So when I asked her, I said, "What do you mean relatives?" She said that those were my grandmother's cousins, and I'm going like, "What the f are you talking about?" <laughs> And I said, so they sound like just dogmen, you know, like wolfmen or whatever, not the shapeshifter type, whatever. She said that what that what had happened was, according to the grandmother, the grandfather would never talk about it. The grandfather wanted to kill them, but the grandmother would not let him. Okay. Because that was a a cousin and its mate really? of, of her grandmother. Yes, the human beings. That had been turned into those animals. That had shape shifted. Yes, that. and I get, and I guess got stuck. So that is weird. Th- that you know, that's that that's one, the first time I've heard anything. Yeah, and then like I've and now the whole the whole that's the whole story. You know, like like you know, I know when we talked about it before, I never did elaborate on the whole shape shifter aspect of it. You know, because it's just. You know, it's well, yeah, for for I mean, for a lot of people who choose to stay on just the pure flesh and blood side of the uh, aspect. of Yeah. It. And then you start arguing about about it one way or the other. So yeah. I didn't want to get into that. But it was just that part of it. You know, if you, the, just the story of her well, being chased yeah. out of the corn is bad enough. But then you you got to deal with the fact that these were people. Yeah. According to the grandmother. According to the grandmother. Yes. And so that, yeah, that brings in the whole paranormal aspect of it, the 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 magical or mystical side of it, where you're like, yeah, that's crazy. That's, I mean, but what a mind job, man. That would definitely blow my mind if yeah. I was told that after having a traumatic experience like that. Well, she was told that when she was still a child, like, you know, and then years later she asked her grandmother, you know, because mm-hmm. I, I, I questioned her about it and we talked in, at length and. I said, did you talk to your grandmother about it again and say when you were older so you know that it wasn't just something that you were thinking, she said? And she was like, no, before my grandmother died, she told us that those were, you know. Relatives. Relatives. Yeah. So are they still there till this day? I have no idea, dude. She yes. said that, that was she only went to the, grand, the grandparents' house and she didn't really like going there because she wasn't even allowed to go very far play outside. Right. She basically had to stay inside most mm-hmm. of the time. And so – she was told that they wouldn't hurt her as long as she stayed out of the cornfield. But there were no guarantees if you were out there away from eye shot or whatever, yeah, you know, yeah. like because, you know, and if you obviously you go up to something, you start touching it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Scare the bejesus out of it. And they would hear howls and things at night, you know, according to her, and that the grandparents would go and they would leave food out. You know, at the edge of the cornfield. That's so. a, that's just amazing that, yeah. uh, you know, that's amazing that you got, this is, this is, I, I have to say, I think this is the first, this is the first uh, report I've heard of a story like this where, where a witness was told that, you know, these, I mean, it's implying shape-shifting slash transformation. Mm-hmm. And she couldn't tell me what it was, what, what that, what, what. That why the grandmother said they were relatives said that you know turns out that the grandmother was just taking copious amounts of acid and was full of it no i'm just kidding i don't <laughs> I, maybe maybe the grandmother was just she's like oh yes dear you know that's that's our cousins and maybe she was just senile or that is, drinking too much uh moonshine i don't know that's, um, that's so barring strange. some sort of which I don't think the grandmother was on drugs or drinking too much. I mean, right. I asked her, did your grandmother drink? And all this stuff, yeah. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm not making fun of your grandmother. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, unless it's some sort of situation where she's schizophrenic and crazy or whatever, you know, then yeah, she must know what she's talking about. I mean, that's her. Had to have been. Yeah. I've never heard of grandparents being BS artists to their children. There are some, I will say there probably are some out there who do, but- by and large, I think not most don't. when it comes to protect them or exactly. whatever. But then you know, she had nothing to gain by telling her that they were that's relatives. True. Yeah, unless so. she's one of those people that's like, you know, like what was that movie with the crocodile where uh, the lady from the Golden Girls was feeding it? Lake Placid. <laughs> Placid. Yeah. Lake Placid. What was her Betty White? 
Yeah. She's like, yeah. oh, the, I'm rooting for the gator, you know, like the, <laughs> she's like the crocodile or whatever. It was a super croc or super something. Super croc like that was living, and she was feeding it cows. Maybe she's like her. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? Yeah. But it's. Oh, those werewolves are my family. You know, who knows? Maybe she, I've heard people say things like that. They think Bigfoot and Dogman are their friends or their family, and I think they're full of it, but. You know, whatever. It, it, maybe she's in, she was an old hippie and they, she thought that. I mean, I, I don't think that's the case. I asked her and she said, no, my grandmother was not they were very always... eccentric. They did. She did say that the house they lived in, though, was also haunted. It had some weird stuff happen to her. Well, but, you know, they could be straight laced, but, you know, kind of like those old. Uh, we mentioned in a previous episode, we talked about the people who live up in the mountains and in the back deep. Yeah, back well, woods yeah, like you're talking about the, stuff. the 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 black cats, shape shifting yeah. black cats. Yeah, well, yeah, in that episode, yeah. I mean, we no, I'm not going to say that it was a shape shifter because I didn't. We nobody's reported seeing him shape shift, but exactly. Maybe it was one of them things where they shifted and they stayed. Yeah, and they got stuck, like you said. Yeah, that's. But that is really interesting. Yeah. I hope uh, I hope you're able to follow up with her. You know, hopefully we can get some more. Well, that's all I got from her. I mean, I got I gleamed every morsel of information I could. Really? Yeah, <sighs> that's amazing, though. I hope. I, well, and, I and hope that, that brings others. me back to your investigation that you need to get on the ball with from Arizona because she had a lot of interesting uh, information too, and I need to get it from you. Yeah, definitely. I got to talk folks, seven, folks. If you are listening, let, let me to tell us, you. Yeah, I'm sorry, we haven't been able to get back with you, seven. So we will trust. She me. wants you saying her name on the air. That's her name, Seven. She says that's okay. Okay, seven. all right. Let me tell you something, folks, okay? Armando needs to get on the ball with his bringing up his investigations. Y'all need to start harassing, me. harassing him on Facebook as old Sal, uh, <laughs> as his name, and then send all kinds of messages on-, on uh, D- DM on, on, yeah. On. Yeah. Start sending him all kinds of emails and stuff and just-, just, just Get on him because he's sitting on a mountain of information. He's not, t- you know, he's not. And then, and then <laughs> we both need to go back and get with Ernest too. So definitely, Ernest, if you're listening, that. we got to get back yeah, with you definitely. too. So with that being said, and I'll say it again, Seven, if you're listening, we will be in contact with you. And uh, that way you can tell us your story. Yeah, and Seven, if you're up. Seven up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, guys. That's all we. That's all the time we have for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed it, Dogman. That's uh, crazy stuff, man. Dogman, Dogman, Werewolf, Wolfman, whatever you want to call it, Hombre Lobo. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Peace. <laughs>